the Peugeot E208 GT. So the electric 208 version has the sporty GT trim. Everything you need to know in exterior, interior and the driving experience. Well, behind us looks almost like we would be in Norway, but we're still in Germany. But Norway would surely fit to this electric theme with a very big EV market for sure. So, what about this EV208? Let's join us here now in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. New generation of the Peugeot 208 is available both with combustion engines and as all electric, the one we have right here. And the design difference is not too big actually, it's just that here the electric version then also has the same color here in the front grille with these vertical dots, let's call them that way, as the rest of the body paint. And I think that looks really very interesting. Vertigo blue is the color for today, a true Thomas blue as we call it right here. Definitely my favorite color. Is it also yours? Here the LED daytime running light with these lion's claw by Peugeot. Very beautiful and dramatic design. And the main headlamp unit can be bought with LED. Automatically comes in the higher trim levels, for example the GT or GT line. Since we have the 208 as GT here today, you have also the sport here, lower bumpers, and this is yeah, so to speak, a full spec car, so hardly any options you can still pick. 4 meters 02, 13 foot 2 or 158 inches is the length of the 208. And we can see here in this GT trim car we have 17 inch wheels. They also come in this somewhat aerodynamic design. And the GT trim also comes with wider wheel arches and they are also here than in the shiny black. So. It's very prominent, the cladding here. Is it too much or do you think it's okay? Please leave us your comments. Then also black mirror caps here as a contrast. The lower part is also in the shiny black, but then the upper part is just this plain plastic. Mm, yeah, I think maybe in this GT trim, it could have been all around the frames. But a pretty simple design here also. Nice playing around with light and shadow with different dropping lines. And we all have this E logo right here. So this is the only design clue then going for the electric version. Other than that, the combustion engine version would almost look the same. That's really good that we have a small electric vehicle you now. So after we have so many big EVs on the market. In the rear, we once again have this lion claw design for the tail lamps and Nice black contrast in the upper and in the lower part. Once again, the GT line here with the badge. And on the logo, once again, it's like an EV mark where the Peugeot Lion has a different color nuance right there. So overall, I think a very modern and likable design. This electric motor delivers 136 horsepower to the front axle in the sport mode, in the normal mode, and, and even less in the eco mode. Then the horsepower output will be reduced a little bit for more eco driving 260 newton meters of torque maximum 8.1 seconds is the acceleration figure to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour and the top speed by the way would be 150 kilometers so that's around 90 miles per hour the battery size 50 kilowatt hours gross and about 46 45 kilowatt hours net and recharging Oh, still wet from cleaning. So 11 kilowatt AC and for a small vehicle still offers DC charging and that is then up to 100 kilowatt. And a realistic range figure if you use this car in the eco mode and also 
don't you know use the acceleration pedal that often you can score some 330 kilometers or 200 miles that would be more like the maximum range you can score of course it will go down if you drive in a sports mode or if you go for a high speed motorway part for example Now let's check out the interior. This is the car key. We know a standard Peugeot car key, but it feels actually quite solid. Then, of course, keyless entry here. Put your hand on the outside and to close it or the inside to open it. Door closing sound. It sounds quite solid. Then, inside of the doors, this is hard pack. But we're also in a small car segment. Then we have this design element right here, which looks carbon fiber like, but in this case, isn't. Here you can see. Nice door handles, window levers, all four, also automatic, and then, yeah, indeed automatic. So you can see here, just one press here for the rear windows, that works. Then the inside of the doors, you can see reasonable door pockets. And as I said, the GT version has the steering wheel with the GT patch and contrast stitches. Once again, this, you know carbon fiber look material but here also soft touch top part also soft touch and then special seats for the GT and also for the electric version because then when you have these sport seats with Alcantara on the inside or microfiber on the inside leather on the outside so it is animal free seating and also with special contour stitches and here exclusively with a gray color for the E208 Really a very beautiful job and also brings a little bit more uniqueness to this electric version. So let's get inside. And the thing is, it's a very small car and sometimes I do have problems in small cars when you're 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. When I have the seat in the lowest position, here there's still some headroom left no problem there is this special or unique cockpit layout steering wheel can be put in and out up and down very small steering wheel and always now a little bit tricky now with the looks because i need to put the steering wheel up if i would put it more down and it would come very close to the legs but when i put it up then it comes really close in the line of sight to the instruments zoom on details about these 3d instruments this again the top spec we have here in the gt trim yeah but i think it still somehow works and it's decently comfortable here indeed on these seats so because they're a little bit more voluminous and they're quite big in this sporty trim and once again with the nice microfiber material this you know feels really high class so here this top setup 12.3 inch digital instruments on the left and 10 inch on the right first of all to these zoom on these that but just a quick um, look, I put <laughs> the steering wheel down for that. You can have different modes where you have different visualizations in there, so then you know you can individualize your style a little bit. We'll soon also show you another close up of the GPS screen. This is where the batteries are also being placed right there. Interesting. Then it doesn't look too weird. I put the steering wheel up again on the steering wheel here. On the left side you would for example pick a radio station and so on pick up the phone left side then to change the digital instruments and also sound control then on the right side you have the top screen here in this gt version you know very horizontal style the soft touch top dashboard zoom more deeds to that screen here by the way it's always a nice trick to use three fingers and then you get to a hidden main menu in the lower part you do still have some hot keys, some capacitive buttons to change something in the infotainment screen and then hard buttons here for example for the headlight lights, for um, the central lock of the vehicle for example and still a normal 
volume knob that's good to have but no manual AC unit and the you know how the seat heating is placed here that looks fancy but it's really hard to control while driving especially in lower part left side USB-C charger is only for charging the Apple CarPlay Android Auto connection you really need to put the USB-A charger and then yeah, where to put your phone is the thing um, here at the moment it's closed and everything is clean and lower part a lot of space but when you then plug in your phone so what possibilities do you have and you can have it here in the lower part also when you have a you know longer cable then you can open this part here and put it right here and this would also be an inductive charging pad in the front or you can do that like this so this would also be possible then yeah maybe also a good solution then then we have the uh, automatic shifting lever here of course in the electric version always with the automatic combustion engine you could choose electric handbrake cup holes are not adaptive but they have two different sizes and then we have an armrest with a leather red cover which can be put in and out and also up and down but see here it cannot be put in a certain you know height you can just open it completely and then have some more space underneath Apple CarPlay integration looks like this and the sound here is actually quite decent for a small vehicle so you know can't complain about that and most of the time I would run it in the CarPlay mode anyway or Android Auto if you have an Android phone because it's just easier to use the rest of the infotainment system is yeah not too easy to use actually um, here once again the three finger trick to get to this main menu and then you can access the Apple CarPlay for example or the Oh, the climate function like this and this is the way you have to then adjust the climate right here with strength and also with the temperature is not a real easy solution especially while driving this can be distracting however you could use voice command to begin say a command after the tone increase temperature temperature changed so this would work, but I think it's always easier when we would have a separate knob. Then the GPS, let's take a look at that. It's, you know, working. It's not the most responsive one, not the best one, but also not the worst. Um, visualization looks a little bit old school, but I think you can still live with that. Other than that, we do also have some special EV gauges where you also have a hotkey in the lower area. And you can show some statistics, for example, or follow the energy flow when, you know, see here, front wheel drive only this vehicle, both for combustion and for the EV drive. And also you can, you know, have some recuperation, of course, and then you have the visualization here. Not sure if you want to use it while driving. And you can also, um, you know, have some charging op options here if it, you want to start charging at a certain time. Most of the time, people just plug it in and then that's it. And the digital instruments here in this top trim in a 3D style. So you can also see it a little bit on camera. They have like two different layers. And it's very interesting because it's projected from the top part here. So very interesting technology. So yeah, it looks very fancy. Also, you can see the GPS integration here in the middle. And then you can also, of course, switch some of the information around. This new generation of the 208 just available with 5-door. Most manufacturers do that nowadays. Of course, also hard pack here, but that's no wonder in this segment. And you have the same beautiful gray microfiber design here in the rear. But the question is, what about the legroom? Of course, it's better than in the previous generation. But, I mean, it's a small car segment and yeah that doesn't really work for me unless we would put the front seat a little bit higher then i could actually fit in this recess here you know with the knees so think about when you have tall people in the rear put the front seat a little higher then it exactly works headroom wise also indeed exactly works that just fit in here and then it's quite okay once again it's nothing for five adults but it would work, again, put the front seat a little bit higher, then it's still okay. So I think the usage of space, exterior, interior relation is very good. Isofix here, at the outside parts, which is, you know, with a nice um, solution here with the, you know, here with the zipper. And once again, leatherette material and microfiber. This is a really good job. And once again, animal free also in the rear. And you have a middle seat here, theoretically. 
but that gets a little bit trickier then. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> It would still maybe work for very, very short trips. Once again, if you put both seats a little bit higher, that would work better. And the middle part here, you have two normal USB-A chargers. What about the boot space? Well, since this platform here was planned from the beginning on to be used with combustion and electric drive, you don't have a compromise as for the leg room, you know, or height in the rear and also not in the boot so 265 liters here at the moment the only compromise is that we have to transport the cables but i mean this is now for the charging station in this back here we have a cable then for the household plug but of course i mean this you would rather leave at home and then you could put this cable in this bag and then it's rather clean then for the trunk yeah i think then we can live with that so the height here to the cover would be about 50 centimeters because there's no, you know, here, there's no additional cover than here at the moment. The width here, a good meter, and the length, it's a small vehicle, just over 70 centimeters, but I think that's, that's really okay. And just to put a cabin trolley inside, and you can see also how that one fits, and yeah, so of course no problem. Now at the moment on the cable, but you can see you can very well use it and of course you can also fold the seats to go around here to the back seat and it's like here the one third two third split goes like this then you do have a step right here but then again you can use the whole height of the trunk if there's no additional cover Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Peugeot E208 and let's start sporty, let's go to the sports mode and see the instant acceleration of this electric vehicle. Plop, that's yeah, almost, almost 80 kilometers an hour, so really good in the acceleration, very powerful and that's so cool about the electric vehicles, you have almost the instant torque is a lot of fun and yet again so silent here the full power output in the sports mode Let's see also steering wise you don't have too much feel actually in the steering but it feels go-kart alike it feels arcade alike like in a computer game so yeah it's not a natural feeling but it's somehow still fun this unique cockpit layout that counts both for the combustion and inversion and for the EV however here the EV to me still more fun because you have the instant torque and driving silently is yeah just feels more suitable to this vehicle on the one hand you have yeah this silent power on the other hand you have this silent serenity and for example here traffic light jumps to red just go on brakes everything is silent yeah besides <laughs> A garbage truck passing us but I mean this is just a cool feeling when you're stuck in traffic I mean you know you just release the brake a little bit then it rolls forward has this you know this creeping effect and that's so cool here about the electric version of the 208 so I really have to say even if you've just driven a few meters you so much more enjoy the EV version of the 208 if you compare it to the combustion engine here in the sports mode once again the acceleration is quite nice and noise, noise insulation here at lower speeds is also just fine. Um, when we compare the driving modes, by the way, here in the normal, steering wise, sports, steering wise. Mm, yeah, there's a little difference. So in sports mode, it gives a little bit more resistance, but it, it's not the biggest difference, I can say. Because the car is so small and the center of gravity is really low, it also feels once again so sporty really a lot of fun and handling and once again the electric version is heavier but still feels sportier because of the lower center of gravity and sometimes even suspension wise i have the feeling that when i drive the ev versions of the car it somehow also feels better suspension wise you know um, sometimes this increased weight can do you know can do a little bit better for the car and this is also um, a very interesting finding definitely 
So cruising it around in the city, it's really very cool. I mean, it's a very, very short vehicle, so finding a parking spot and so on is also very easily done. That's also why you would go for the small EV. Yeah, and of course then, um, yeah, for the price. When you approach like this chicane, <laughs> you always enjoy that you have something like this. You can once again go once more to the sports mode. Here now, let's do acceleration 40 to 70, but uphill. That's it, and you see, even if we're going uphill, no problem, no effort at all. In the normal driving mode, I told you earlier, the horsepower output is a little bit reduced and the throttle input as well. And in the eco mode, what happens there? Even more throttle input reduced, horsepower output reduced, and also the thermal comfort is reduced. It also tells you in the gauge. We have the AC on. I still feel it's cold, but the thing is that the AC is a little bit less strong than. Again, there is still cold air coming, so it's not that it's off. It's just a little bit more, yeah, a little bit more efficient than. So in this eco mode, you can also tune your range, and it indeed also changes the range that is being displayed right there. This car does come with a heat pump as standard. What does it do? So when you have, um, you know, when you have the yeah, when you have the AC or um, when you have very cold days, for example, especially, then it is more efficient. So it doesn't make the range longer at all. But when you're, for example, driving this car at cold days and use the heating, then it will reduce the reduction in range. You know what I mean? So the range drop won't be as as harsh as it would be without the heat pump. Therefore, it's definitely very important to have that here in an electric vehicle. Um, it works like a fridge in a reverse way then, so to speak. Here's some countryside driving, enjoying that. The suspension is, you do feel that when you have some bumps in the road, so it's not the most forgiving suspension. So, you know, there was this um, uh, hydro uh, pneumatic suspension by Citroën once back in the days, but the modern French cars are not the best as for suspension. That's not their focus. It's more about like this, you know, very special design, for example. And of course, very cool. If you were, for example, skeptical about the engines by the French manufacturers, but again, Peugeot also scored very good reliability ratings recently. But even if you would be skeptical about the combustion engine form from a certain country or, or brand or so, um, I mean, this is not an electric vehicle. And this is always, let's say, easier. Um, it can, you know, less can break. The electric motors are all very, very reliable. There's hardly any problems with electric vehicles that the motors break. Um, and maybe then, you know, just after like a very, very long mileage and so on. So, let's see, we are in the eco mode once again. And I mean, yes, the throttle input is reduced a little bit. Let's test that here when I'm eco mode and hammer it all the way through. Still spontaneous somewhat and then sports mode. Yeah, I feel I get more boost, but I wouldn't say that when you're in the eco mode, you can cannot drive this car in a fast way. So even if you are in the oh, those are these, when you when you are in the eco mode, you still get a decent punch. So um, that's always nice because you might want to drive it in eco mode to have good, um, you know, good figure here for the kilowatt hour consumption. But then sometimes you might need some acceleration, spontaneous acceleration or so and then you still have it even if you are in the eco mode. So uh, that's not, not something you, you know, you can, you know, yeah, you shouldn't care about that. So I reset the consumption meter now and see how efficiently we can drive this vehicle. And I also have the gauges right there. For example, when I get off the throttle, we are recharging a little bit more and also shows me at, you know, which throttle input I'm still in the like economic range. Here also we have the visualization when the battery is gained back or when we're using battery. And in the shifting lever in the middle part, I either have it at the normal D driving mode. Then when I get off the throttle, I see there's like this margin of charge. And when I hit the brakes, there's more recuperation. 
only if you know and even more braking power than the real brakes were being applied. Then I have is this B mode and when I get off the throttle in the B mode there's more recuperation so more deceleration. The only thing when it is not happening is when you have the battery absolutely full then the modes don't differ because the car cannot reach reach out or recuperate anymore. But here definitely a difference in B mode. So when I switch to the B mode for example then I see that the recuperation gets a little bit less. Um, it's not such a harsh recuperation that you would say this car can be driven one pedal feeling all the way. So the electric vehicles and also the, the plug-in hybrid vehicles have different philosophies as for this aspect. Some really want to transport the one pedal feeling. That can be good, but that's also a matter of preference. This one here, even if you're in the B mode, not really one pedal feeling. Um, it's more about that you rather drive it a little bit like a classic small vehicle. I have two hearts uh, um, in, in this case because on the one hand I think a good, ex de a good deceleration, a good recuperative braking when you leave the throttle is somehow safe because when you want to reduce the speed inside the city and so on and you switch from the throttle pedal to the brake pedal, just in this split second you're already decelerating and that's a safety thing. Then again, especially thinking about poor co-drivers, poor Jonas, electric vehicles, but I mean, he's, he's iron stomach Jonas, he can take any race trip of the world, it's like, how does he do that? I still don't get it. Um, but then again, thinking about like more sensitive um, passengers, when you have harsh recuperation and you're not finally tuning it by leaving your throttle, but always get off the throttle instantaneously and then have a harsh regenerative braking, it also applies a lot of g-forces and this can indeed be then you know something stressful for the passenger so if you have an electric vehicle with a strong one pedal feeling then you really need to learn to finally lift the you know foot of the throttle and not always go for it all the way just to you know take care of your fellow passengers here once again a lot of fun to steer this car around so in general one of the fun cars in the small car segment. In this new generation they really found a sporty layout so if you compare it to the previous generation no matter if combustion or EV the new 208 definitely has a sportier setup not only because of this new i cockpit but also just from the general driving feeling and the EV even feels sportier and I can so much enjoy this side and drive, especially for the small vehicles, you don't miss any engine noise and so on. And now let's go a little bit faster. What we can do here, let's go about 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour. And oh, I have to reduce the speed already again. But you heard that there weren't any significant wind noises. So, so far, the noise insulation, as for that, to me, is a, is a very, very good level. Only thing is, um, I'm not sure if it's the camera that is mounted here that the window doesn't really cope with that. But we do have some rattling, a little bit of rattling noise here from the window. Maybe it's really that. You now we have to remove the camera and see if it still appears. I'll tell you in the conclusion. Um, but that would be one irritating uh, thing at the moment. Uh, but other than that, I think no strange noises here. Um, maybe this. I don't know. This is all. I mean, this doesn't rattle when you don't touch it, but here, you hear that as well? Like, it, it can be like from, from, from the mount and maybe like the effect it has on the window, I don't know. But we'll tell you once again in the conclusion. So, what about the energy consumption and the realistic range? Um, at the moment, it tells us 340 kilometers. You know, it really depends on how you have been driving. Now we've been driving some downhill and therefore the energy consumption is quite low at about 11 kilowatt hours and more kilometers would, would be like the ideal stuff. Um, but before when we did our performance tests it was more like a 30 plus kilowatt hours and more kilometers. That's of course when you really use all the power the vehicle has. So same with combustion engines if you really power it up you have almost like double the and you know double the consumption. The truth is always somewhere in between. 
and that means that in depending on temperature conditions and so on and how you really use the vehicle you can always calculate with about 150 miles plus or more than 250 kilometers then you're safe um, I think I wouldn't calculate with much more um, you know unless you have like a constant driving profile and really have your own experiences with that and uh, we'll just finish our round and then tell later on with which what with, with what consumption we have uh, yeah let's stop here uh, we have ended up and um, you know when you see the energy consumption then you can always calculate then you know from the battery so um, especially when you have the net capacity of the battery. Oh, there was a Renault Zoe. We should review that one also at a later stage, definitely. So now here when we're going down, once again I can test the B mode, more recuperation, D mode, then recuperation goes a little bit slimmer and I can just roll a little bit more forward or finally tune the throttle once again if I just want to accelerate slightly out. And here, even at higher speeds, the car remains stable, doesn't lean too much to the left and the right. This is to me also, once again, an effect that this added weight from the battery really brings some calmness into the vehicle. So, to me, it's absolutely clear, if I would buy this vehicle, I would definitely go, the hell? That was very fast. Just 100 kilometers an hour without you. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely pick the 208 as the EV version. It's most fun in that way, um, also most efficient. And if you have the charging infrastructure, you should also do that. Maybe even some governmental benefits and so on. To me, it's really, you know, about the range, you can, you know your trips, you know. And this is not a car where you would say, like, I do 20,000 miles or 40,000 kilometers a year as a salesman. Um, more like here as a city vehicle. I think the crucial thing is once again the charging infrastructure. If you have that set up at your home, at your house or so, or you have very well accessible public charging stations. And considering this is a small vehicle and it doesn't have like the super biggest battery, but I think reasonable sized for this, um, for this small car. You can also recharge even with DC. Not all cars have that, not all, especially not the plug-in hybrids. And think about the competitors some even have way smaller batteries Honda e for example with a way small battery for example so I think they overall found a very good solution and driving wise really a lot of fun as for the comfort of the seats yeah you may be seen on camera on the interior part it sometimes looks a little bit funny when I'm sitting on this seat here and it doesn't appear to be that comfortable for a tall person of course, I'm more comfortable in a mid-size estate or mid-size sedan or in a compact SUV and so on, sure. But for a small car, these are sport seats, and once again with the nice soft microfiber, um, come on guys. They, they do actually a nice job. So um, more comfort than expected, actually, you can say. So really enjoying this round in the E208. I hope you did as well. Now to our conclusion for today with the Peugeot E208. First of all, two things from the driving part directly. This rattling at the window was indeed caused by the camera mount. So the playing together with the mount and the weight that was applied on the window obviously didn't play around well. But then without the mount, there was no rattling sound, so also a good result as for that. Then the energy consumption. In a test, we you know, reset the, the meter for that and then just went straight rather with, you know, not too high speeds. And we could score some 14 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers. And that would indeed lead to a range of about 330 kilometers or 200 miles at a more optimum level at, you know, decent temperatures and also not too high speed. If you use this car then higher speed on the motorway or if the temperatures are really low then the range figure will also drop down you have to keep that in mind in general the exterior a very likable vehicle sporty style a modern style great vertigo blue color here of course thomas blue so i think 
is a very nice small vehicle as for design. The interior design is very unique in the segment with this Peugeot i-Cockpit. Also unique feature with the 3D instruments and a great design job here for the seats which have the special grey microfiber than in the GT trim when you go for the electric version. Here and there the interior build quality can be stepped up of course a little bit but then I have to think about the segment as well. Um, so here and there some hard plastic use which could be a little bit nicer. Um, then of course also the temperature control. If you go 22 degrees Celsius and leave it on automatic mode you wouldn't care. But for everyone who wants to control something of the AC unit then of course it gets complicated especially by driving. The GPS and navigation is also not too easy to use. Most of the time you would rather go than probably with the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connection. Driving-wise, suspension is not the best as for forgiving the bumps, so this could be something to improve. Other than that, it's really a very fun ride. The steering could be a little bit more natural in the feeling. Yet again, it has a very unique feeling. It has a like computer game, arcade-style feeling, so it's a lot of fun to drive this vehicle, especially in the electric version. So this lower center of gravity and this added weight, I think, really does the car very well. So it feels very, very sporty, even sportier than the combustion engine ver version. If you compare it to the previous version, the 208 in general drives sportier now, that too to mention. And definitely this car here as the EV version, the best pick you can have. And also a decent battery size, definitely for this very segment. Overall, I think for the small car segment, one of the best offerings at the moment in the small EV market. What's your take on that? Please leave us your comments and also see you at one of our other reviews.